So uh, first of all, I want to welcome you all here this afternoon to Oris Onukron. And there's, uh, we're really honored to have the Holocaust survivors, Susie Diamond and her assistant, uh, Carolyn Collins, and then Tommy Reichen Paul, our old friend from January days, and his partner, um, Joyce Weinrich. So it's lovely to have you all here and to especially to welcome all these wonderful children from the Educate Together School and their teachers, these two men over there, put up your hands and see the teachers, <laughs> there they are, yeah. And then the people from the uh, Education Trust, the, um, the Holocaust Education Trust Ireland. So you're all very, very welcome, as is the people from the Oris and all the wonderful people like Robert from the, the gardening thing who have been working on, on getting this together and we'll be looking after these crocuses. They're all planted by the way in the middle. They've planted all of the places there. They just left those star corners for the for the children. So you'll know when you come back to see them that these are the ones we planted. Yeah. So um, now uh, the pro the, we think the crocus project is a great initiative and the president and I find it really very powerful and very moving indeed. And um, it's a message, the message it gives, and it's a message that must not be lost, even in the conditions of the circumstances we're in now, dealing with the pandemic, but it must not be lost. So these will keep it, keep it in mind. And our plaque when it goes up, will, it say, will say the Irish people will, will not forget and we'll have it in Irish and English, it'll be on, it's been worked on already, we could be ready for today, over on that side, it'll be in position there. Now, so, and then the yellow, of the yellow crocuses, uh, recall the stars of David that the Jewish people were forced to wear during the Nazi rule. And when people admire the flowers, they will recall the, those times to the Nazis were in power. And it's the one of the first flowers to emerge in spring. So when there's the Holocaust Commemoration Day on the 27th of January, these will be in bloom and they will be, as they say, a reminder. And young people, you'll have an opportunity as young people to reflect on all of the children, that the 1.5 million children that suffered and perished in the Holocaust. It's a terrible, terrible thing. And we, when people see them in spring, they'll think about those children and they'll think of them with love and with pity for all these terrible, terrible suffering, these poor little children, and then all their daddies and mammies and everyone. Yeah, so for us all, it'd be an occasion for um, reflection as well. It's on occasions today that we have an opportunity to reflect on human rights and the need for peace and a recognition of our interdependence and the need in our world for an end to war. The COVID pandemic has reminded us all of our interconnectedness as humans and has demonstrated the great challenges we now face requiring a shared response that goes beyond all borders. Xenophobic, racist, homophobic language must be called out for what it is an attack on the dignity and sacredness of the human life and on the basic values of pluralism, openness, inclusivity, and respect for diversity of both peoples and cultures. In international relations too, we must ask, can we accept the rhetoric of renewed preparations for war between some of the most heavily armed countries in the world and that this could be a substitute for our diplomacy. The Procus project is about reminding us of what a failure of diploma diplomatic uh, failure it can mean in its bad consequences. We know that at its worst it can result in violent conflict, genocide and destruction of countless human lives and potential. And unfortunately, these have been going on in the world for a very long time, but 
this is a time when we can look to the future and try to have a different world. Because there are many daunting challenges that rather than ignoring them, if we in get interested and know and understand them better, then we will know the solutions and we'll know what to do. We now have the historic opportunity to build a sustainable and more responsible shared world and to offer solidarity to the poorest nations on the globe. This includes ensuring that the universal um, the, the vaccine is universally available and that has to be done without further delay. 7.8 billion people in the world and so few of them have access to the vaccine, which means they, they will transmute and keep coming, coming back. So we have to answer the call of the Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus of the United Nations and of the World Health Organization to vote for CTAP. That's the COVID technology access. And that would give the countries the technology and the know-how to manufacture the vaccine themselves at a cost that would be affordable to them. Now that has been blocked by some of the manufacturing countries, but a hundred countries of more have voted for that to happen. So we hope that it will happen and that it will bring about an end to the, the COVID now. And we, but we also know that the big threat and the big challenge for us all on the planet is what children? Climate change, yeah. We know that because nature was not respected and treated properly for hundreds of years, that it suffered and is suffering to its core, which has unbalanced the balance in nature and brought about climate change. So we have the fires, the hearth warming that is causing fires and deserts. And then we have the melting of the ice cap, which is causing the floods and people are fle fleeing natural disasters everywhere from the fighting brought about by the conflicts and the scarce food. So that is a really a thing, the food thing and the water thing and all of those. So that's why we have to get the balance back in nature so it will provide for all the people on the earth. So, and this little crocus garden will make us think of the children and their families who are suffering today when we see them. And we just have to keep that in mind all the time. And it's very motivating and things to see what, what can be done. So the great good thing is now that the leaders of the world know about climate change and they know from science what to expect. They know the planet is in danger and that they have been actually working in the United Nations for years to get a, bring a plan about that will save it. So the 200 countries, uh, members of the United Nations, they have agreed to put in place a plan, and that is the 17 sustainable developments, and that will heal the planet and look after life on Earth. So that is the great, great object of our time and the great solution to the to problems of the world. And they're a plan for peace and prosperity, promoting human development, ethical society, human rights and dignity. And I'm sure your children probably know them from school. I would think I've been to schools where they have them the all. So there's 17 there. You probably know them off by heart. No poverty, no hunger, good health and well-being, um, good quality education, uh, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, clean and affordable energy equality and going on then to climate change on water and on land. So that's uh, countries all over the world. They're working and all governments all over the working are working to bring these about. And the president and I and everybody, every place around the world, we're inspired and motivated by them. And we're dedicated to working for them every day so that those goals can be achieved. We know that there's only one planet and that we could all live happily on it if we shared things fairly. It's not fair, but there's great inequality. Some people have not enough to survive on and some people have more than they need. And there's a great difference between what you need and what you want. That if people have enough, 
they are there to meet their needs, they can be happy and have a fruitful, developed life. But if they want, there are people who, there's no end to what they want. And they're greedy and stupid and silly that are wanting, wanting. So we'll all be wise <laughs> and know that. So now we all know that we have to make changes to the way we live. And you children are part of the world who are going to save the earth and the planet and give it the love it needs. Is that right? Yes. 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 Good. Yeah. And it's so wonderful that with all the information that you will be getting from the United Nations and from UNICEF, which is the United Nations Children Education Fund, you will know so much of what needs to be done and what you can do. And they will be very exciting, though very motivating, great thing, always make you wake in the day morning, wanting to be out there and knowing those things and that you'll be happy then and living great lives. So I want to say how lovely it is to have you all here today. And then you must come up in spring and then you'll remember the Holocaust and those children and you will see the crocus garden in blue yeah so lots of love and good wishes to you all and have a great day